What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another Dota 2 commentary. This is again from the Eastern International 3 qualifiers in Group B. This is a losers bracket match between Mineski and Mythtrust. And I guess Mythtrust got sent to losers by Rising Star, so it is going to be two top Chinese teams in the winners bracket finals. I mean, all these two Southeast Asian teams are really going to duke it out to try to advance and try to get themselves a spot in the playoffs bracket. But right now, one of these Southeast Asian teams will have to go home, and it's going to be Mythtrust from Thailand versus Mineski. Mythtrust is a Dota team that's been around for quite a while, and it seems like they've been able to keep a relatively consistent roster. And that's very interesting, because I have not seen Mythtrust participate in too many Dota 2 tournaments, and they haven't been playing Dota 1 to, best, to the best of my knowledge, so I wonder how their practice schedule is like. Miel Mineski have played rather well, but have made a couple mistakes here and there. Unfortunately, their carry play has not been the most spectacular, or even if it was, uh, they might not have the appropriate game plan to make the most usage out of their carry that they choose. So we'll see if both teams could bring their A game, because they're definitely going to need it if they want to have any shot of making to the playoff bag of the International 3 Eastern Qualifiers. But yeah, these are probably some of the last games that I'm going to cast from this particular group. I'm going to try to upload upload these uh, quite frequently from now on. I know I said that for the last qualifier, but this time I mean it because this time I have a bit more free time, so I will be able to upload these a bit more frequently, and hopefully you'll be able to watch all of them and support me, but if not, then I'm not going to hold a grudge or anything like that. <laughs> but anyway, Mineski going to first pick up the Jarakatra. Interesting choice, as Mineski going to get themselves that keg right off the bat. Myth Trust, on the other hand, they've been on Barrater as well as the Life Stealer. So that leaves Nyx in the pool, which is a very, very strong ganker. Also, they could try to pick up their Soul Myth if they really wanted to get some early control over the game. But I imagine one of their first choices will be a support backbone for their trialing. But yeah, Myth Trust from Thailand, Team Mineski from the Philippines. Unfortunate that the two Southeast Asian teams do have to square out in this very, very early match. But unfortunately, that's what happens when you lose their first games. But Myth Trust going to pick up the Rubik rather than getting a Nyx right off the bat. So they want to have a bit more versatility in their lineup. Really just have that semblance of team fight control without needing too many items. I mean, Nyx is a very strong team fighter, but he does want to have that Blink Dagger in order to make the best usage of it. And if he needs to gank, then... I mean, Nyx is a hero that in order to make the most usage of him, you do want to gank with him quite frequently. So Mythtrust might not be going for that. They might be going for a bit more mid to late game dominance, and that's why they picked up the Dragonite. And Dragonite, of course, a very, very strong mid solo hero. Very, very strong hero in general. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how Mythtrust plays it, because in the Chinese and Southeast Asian scenes, they more often than not play him as more of a utility carry, but... We'll see how Myth Trust decides to use him. Will he go mid solo and go into a Shadow Blade Rush Five or something like that? Or will he be handled as a hard carry? I'm going to be inclined to think that he will go in the mid solo region. And Dragonite, he's very, very powerful. He's very, very tanky, but he doesn't reach his true effectiveness until he hits that level 16. So Myth Trust, they're going to have to buy Dragonite a lot of time. And if they can do that, I think Dragonite can match up quite well against Gyrocopter because he does have a natural AoE attack, has a natural slow attack in level 16 form, and has a lot of armor to withstand a lot of Gyrocopter's Black Cannon barrages. Mio and Mineski going to pick up the Visage as well as the Templar Assassin, so they're going to go very, very aggressive with their first three picks. Gyrocopter, not that aggressive hero, but in conjunction with the Visage, they're going to have an aggressive child, and that can be very, very dangerous. Gyrocopter does do quite a bit of damage on the back of his Rocket Barrage. Visage, of course, does a ridiculous amount of damage on the back of his Soul Assumption, and also controls the lane very well with the Great Shell, allowing him a lot more maneuverability, as well as draining the opposing team's move speed by an immense amount as well. And Templar Assassin is going to be traced by Mineski. So this is a very, very aggressive pick, but Mineski really needs to get the snowball going because otherwise Visage and Templar Assassin won't really have that much of an impact in the mid-stages of the game where they really need to have a great impact. But in the mid lane matchup, you do have to go with TA over the Dragonite. I mean, once Dragonite does hit level 6 and does get that poison form, or the poison attack in his Elder Dragon form level 1, then he can start to work on the ra refraction charges, but until then, TA should have a huge advantage, and Dragonite really can't do much to contest her in terms of stopping her farm, or even getting that much farm himself, as long as the TA player does play his cards right. And JVN, who did play the TA in game number 1 versus VG Gaming, played a really, really strong TA for the most part, so I expect the TA to win the mid matchup quite handily if Dragonite is going to go in the mid lane. But I like Myth Trust's third pick up quite a bit. They're going to choose the Darkseer, and even though this Darkseer is most likely going to go in the off lane, or 
could potentially go in the safe lane if Mythrust do want to dodge the aggressive try and buy Mineski. They also have the possibility of putting in mid lane, and Darkseer just completely decimates Templar Assassin in mid lane. So this might give Mineski some cause to just sort of reconsider how they lane it. I think they're going to put the TA in the mid lane regardless, but Mythrust now, they have another option. If they want to put Dragon Knight as a hard K farmer, sure, he might not get as much experience, but he can withstand the gyrocopter harassment and visage harassment a little bit better than most carries, just because he's very, very survivable. And he will be able to get a decent amount of farm, but of course, Dragon Knight, you do want to get as much experience as possible, so there's that why he might not go in the safe lane as a hard carry. You know, Mineski gonna have the Marana. Interesting choice. Marana yeah. might just be a respect end towards Mythrust. Again, I have not seen Mythrust play in quite a while, but I can't recall them having a particularly impressive Marana. I know Lakels likes to play Morphling, and that's pretty much the all the extent. I know Mythrust before Barada got super powerful, before he got ridiculously but Mythrust is one of the few teams we ran up consistently. So those are the only couple facts I know about Mythrust. And I don't think they would have picked the Marana. Marana, not that strong of a hero, very unreliable, yeah, and he's way too many times to carry into the late game. But maybe Bineski just want to eliminate escapable carries. But Mineski gonna get rid of Keeper Light. Another smart ban by Mineski because an aggressive try and against Keeper Light is just going to be a lot more difficult, especially since Keeper Light can get the pulls going and can cast the Illuminate and decimate the HP pool of the Gyrocopter. And even Visage will have to think twice about facing against Illuminate. So Mineski, rather than facing that problem head-on, just going to choose to ban out outright. You know, Myth Trust are smart ban on their own part. They're going to be out the Nyx Assassin, so getting rid of one of the main supports Ten that Mineski could green. possibly take. I don't know if Mineski would have taken him, but it would have been a very powerful oh. trial and support. And mana burn against heroes like Dragonite green. is going to be incredibly annoying. So they're going to get rid of it from the pool altogether. They're going to also get rid of the Magnus, so interesting choice, I guess. Hmm. I don't know why they got rid of the Magnus, because they have the Rubik and they also have the Dark Seer, so I don't know how big of an impact Magnus would have had, but maybe they just want, don't want to deal with him in a one-on-one -on -one matchup if Magnus does go on the state, on the off lane. But Magnus has been laid from the pool, so Mineski uh, might ban out one more support. Marana could have also been banned out as a support, because Dragonite Dragon Tail Stun seconds. does lead into Marana's arrow quite nicely, and also telekinesis leads to an arrow very, very nicely as well. Remaining. So maybe Mineski respected the support Marana, so they just want to get rid of her from the equation. So exactly. if that's something to go on, then Mineski will probably ban out one more support in their last ban. But so far, I like Mineski's lineup. It seems very, very aggressive, and that is definitely very suitable to Mineski's playing style. I'm a bit worried because if they don't manage to get off to a good start, then they will have a lot of trouble ending the game because their heroes aren't really that good at breaking the base. And if they don't get off to a good start, then it's going to be very, very difficult. Of course, they always have Gyrocopter in the back, but Gyrocopter against Dragonite, I think Dragonite does have the advantage as long as Gyrocopter doesn't get a rapier, just because, again, he does have a lot of armor. And Darkseer just makes team fights a living hell for whoever he is up against. So Mineski been out the Weaver, so... Interesting choice, but they have a very chasing art to team. Visage, a very strong chaser. Templar Assassin, a strong chaser as well. And there's already a Dark Seer on the side, Myth Trust, which will really hamper Mineski's chasing abilities. So I guess they don't really want to deal with the Weaver as well. So if that's the case, then Weaver was probably a smart ban. Meow, Myth Trust bang out offlane heroes, so I guess that's why they got rid of the Magnus. They also bang out the Clock as well. Clock, a very, very strong offlane hero, also pretty aggressive, and I think it would have worked well Ten in Mineski's seconds. lineup. But, remaining. yeah, I think Mineski will go into the aggressive try, and we'll see how Myth Trust decides to handle as Mineski going to pick up the Wisp. Wisp, not the greatest aggressive try hero, but when he's backed up with a Gyrocopter as well as a Visage, Wisp can do quite a bit. But again, if Mineski's trial doesn't really work out, then Wisp will be very, very behind in terms of experience, and he can be utter food in these engagements, especially against the ridiculously tanky lineup of Mythrust. Rubik, of course, can get that null field up. Dragonite is naturally very tanky and has that dragon's blood. Darkseer tends to build very tanky and also is naturally tanky himself, has a lot of armor, has a pretty high strength growth for an intelligence hero. Five so Wisp, seconds, if the trial does remaining. not work out, then he will have a pretty difficult time getting himself back in the game. At least that's going to be my guess.
me on Myth Trust, thinking long and hard right now. I think it's still going to be Dragon. I made Darkseer off. Rubik going to be one of the components of a safe lane trialing. So Myth Trust have to pick up one more support as well as a carry. Unless they put Dragonite in the hard carry role in the uh, safe lane trialing and get a mid soul themselves. They're going to choose Sand King, so they're going to fortify the support backline. Even though I'm really just not a big fan of support Sand King, I think this game makes a lot of sense because you know the Mineski trial line will probably be very, very aggressive. Sand King is quite a strong defensive hero on a trial because you can pretty much always manage to get a two man burrow strike in the early stages of the game because heroes do tend to clump up because they don't have the boots to speed. But Mineski going to fortify their lineup with the Chaos Knight. So they have a triple core carry. So they can match up against Mythrust in the late game, as well as having very, very aggressive heroes. I really like Mineski's draft. The only thing I'm a bit worried about is that their team fight potential is just going to be severely lacking. If Mineski don't manage to get the ganks off, then they're going to be a lot of trouble. Mythrust going to get Lakel's signature hero, the Morphling. So it's been a while since he's seen a Morphling game. And I guess we're going to see one today. I'm pretty excited. And I'll tell you why in just a moment as I take a sip of water as the player is going to pick their heroes. I'm a bit parched today. Not sure why. But yeah, even when Morphling was super popular, I always thought Morphling was a pretty fun hero to watch because he is one of the few characters who can fight very early on. His waveform does a ridiculous amount of damage, and he doesn't really have to worry about diving in too far because he is the most survivable carry in the game by a long shot. He has waveform, he has replicate, and he has morph to get himself out of trouble. So I didn't even mind Morphling being ridiculously powerful, but Morphling seems like he's a ridiculously tricky hero to balance because he's either not viable at all or just completely overpowered and that might just be because he's a carry who is ridiculously difficult to kill so either he's going to be too strong or just too weak in general but Lakelis again even before Morphling got buffed last year did play Morphling so Myth Trust going with what they know for the most part and we're gonna have to see how Lakelis helmets is and again because of the Morphling nerfs to Morph uh, the mana cost, of course, being increased. Morph is gonna have to go for the Lincoln Sphere Rush. Definitely in this game, up against a Chaos Knight, as well as a Gyrocopter. And even the Visage can be very, very annoying with their single target abilities. But interesting, the players and teams on both sides, we're gonna have Oa playing the Visage, Jay is playing the Chaos Knight, JVN is playing the Templar Assassin. Yanni is gonna be playing the Gyrocopter, and Fat Dog is gonna be playing the Wisp. Me on the side of Myth Trust, we're gonna have. TNK playing the Darkseer, R5, R5 is playing the Sand King, Aba is playing the Dragon Knight. I always love that name because it sounds like a sheep. As oh, Chaos Knight and Wisp venturing very far forward, but Mistrust is just going to play super defensively. It's going to be SD playing the Rubik and Lakels is going to be playing the Morphling. So, one of the reasons why they picked up the Morphling is again, he's very, very signature hero of Lakels. He can drag out the game to a late stage of the game, even up against a triple core. You need a carry like Morphling to go out in. Especially when you don't have the early game advantage, which Mineski clearly does with their picks. They have so much damage, they have so much chasing that I don't think Myth Trust could have possibly been able to match Mineski in the early stages of the game. So they need a carry that can match up well against a triple core carry that Mineski has in the late game, and Morphling is one of those heroes that can do quite well. Also, Morphling is a very defensive hero by nature in the early stages of the game. Even though he can be aggressive, he can go do a lot of damage with his waveform. He is also ridiculously difficult to kill. And so, against the aggressive Chine, I think Mineski will have a lot of trouble bringing the Morphling down. As reconnect is the call, so just going to fast forward to it. No, looks like immediate reconnect. Just checking out the Templar Assassin build. She is rushing the ball ASAP. She is not really that afraid of any level 1 ganks. Mineski do have a ward here covering her ass from the rotation of the dire supports. So I imagine Templar Assassin will get her ball relatively soon. Again, she has refraction. There's really not too much Dragonite can do in terms of harassing the Templar Assassin out of the lane until he hits level 6. Meal on the bottom lane, Gyrocopter versus Darkseer. I think the advantage will have to go in favor of Darkseer, but still he can take a lot of ass in. But the why this lane does go in favor of Darkseer is even though Gyrocopter can push out the lane on the back of Flat Cannon and clear out the creeps on the back of Rock Brush, Darkseer doesn't really care. He just wants his farm, he doesn't really want to kill the Gyrocopter. And if he's having a difficult time, he'll just cut around the creep wave and do some creep skipping in between these middle towers. Or in between these bottom towers. As we're going to see engage on the top lane, Burrow Strike going to help forestall the assault as really, really well played by R5. R5 managed to save the life of his Rubik as Jay did use a lot of his mana using that Chaos Ball and that is one of the unfortunate things about Chaos Knight Gank. If they don't work out, he's going to be left a long while without having that extra bit of regen. But there is a Wisp there to pop clarities and give himself a bit more mana if Chaos Knight truly does need it. 
but it looks like the Dire actually did some dewarding, so they are going to be able to get some pulls. I don't imagine Morphin will get too much farm in this top lane because, again, he's going to be facing two range heroes and he always has to be careful, but it's going to be very tricky for Manessi to get kills. And again, if you're not getting kills with, with a Chaos Knight and a Whisk combination in your lane, then it's just going to really set you back because Chaos Knight relies heavily on kills in order to make up for his farm. And in the mid to late stages of the game, are you going to be more likely to give your farm to the Gyrocopter and the TA, or are you going to be more likely to give it to the Chaos Knight? I think it's going to be the former rather than the latter. So Chaos Knight needs to make the most of his landing phase, try to get as many kills as possible, and if he can't get as many last hits as possible, because I don't imagine he's going to receive too much farm as the game drags on. So go is the call once again. But Lakel is already forced to use a Tango, Sanking was forced to use a defensive Burrow Strike. So right now Mythtrust again, the purpose of the Trion is not to win it, their purpose is just to survive. And if they do that, then they should be in decent shape going to the main game, but considering that TA should be absolutely having a field day in terms of free farm, I think Mineski will be alright if they don't manage to get too many kills. Again, they might regret it just having an underfarmed Chaos Knight, but if they can get a free farm TA as well as a free farm Gyro in exchange, then I think Mineski will be happy with the exchange. As another pause is going to go through, just going to fast forward it once again. But just checking out the movement, looks like Abba has the bottle. Going to pick up a regen rune, so he's going to spam a lot of Breath of Fire through the creep wave. And that will uh, give TA sort of some pause, but still, Breath of Fire does have quite a long cooldown, so you can't really drain a fraction with it constantly. But still, it will allow DK to fortify himself in lane. You can't really harass the DK out of lane anymore, even if he didn't have that regeneration rune, just because he's ridiculously tanky. And actually, interestingly enough, it's Mythtrust, the non-Filipino team that picked up two couriers. So that indicates they're going to do a lot of ball curling. You can see Dragonite not using that bottle just yet, but Darkster is constantly faring himself uh, that bottle crow ASAP. That will be a bit of a drain on the Mythtrust supports, but still, it'll be worth it in the long run if they can manage to get a free farm Darkster, because Darkster will have a tremendous impact in holding back the squad of Mineski in the mid-game. But Abba wants to use his Fire Breath, is going to use it, and then pop the Regenerator at the same time to make the most maximum efficiency out of it. Unfortunately, I don't think he got any last hits with that, but still, 9 CS against TA is definitely, you know, nothing to be ashamed of. Deny. Again, Dragonite's goal is just to get experience. He's not really expected to get that much farm against this matchup. And that might be why, you know, Mineski picked TA as a third pick rather than... Uh, getting it in the second phase, because Dragonite probably would have had a lot more easy time if he was faced up against any other mid in the game. Matia just has way too much damage that Dragonite can't really hope to keep up in terms of last hits, and you can see that's definitely taking effect. Control. Meanwhile, Mineski knowing that they can't do anything in this trial lane, they're just trying to pull, they're trying to get whatever they can, but Mineski going to drop a ward. Mythtrust going to rotate their support to the bottom lane, looking to make something happen on the Gyrocopter potentially. They only have a level 1 sanking, but they do have the Iron Shell Surge combination if they really want to go for it. But it looks like Darkseer just going to do some creep skipping and sanking. Not going to do too much. And if you haven't watched any of my commentaries, you know I'm really, really just not a big fan of support sanking. And there's a couple reasons why I think that, as Gyrocopter could be in a bit of trouble. Here comes the search on sanking. Iron Shell will be there as well. Double Iron Shell going to drain down Yanni's HP by a ridiculous amount. Rocket Barrage is going to be there, but Skin is soaked up by two heroes. Really nice gank by Mythtrust, killing down the Gyrocopter, and that's going to go a long way in terms of keeping that hero down. But now, seeing that support has rotated to the bottom lane, they're going to make an attempt on Lakel's life up top, and the Chaos Knight right clicks in conjunction with the Wisp orbs will be able to secure the kill. So, I think Mineski, even though they lost that trade, the fact that they got a kill on the Chaos Knight is not going to leave them too depressed, even though I think they did come off worse in that engagement. Because Lakelis wasn't farming anything anyways. Gyrocopter was having such a ridiculously easy time farming that slowing down his farm at this, space, at this stage in the game is just going to be very, very detrimental. And that is going to allow Darkseer to get a very, very fast mechanism if he chooses to go that route. 
But yeah, back to support Sand King. The reason why I'm not a fan of it is because Epicenter doesn't really get better as the game goes on. None of Sand King spells get better as the game goes on. As Colin is going to be used, and it will do a huge chunk of damage. Ionchel not being used on Sand King as Darkseer going to be in a lot of trouble. He will end up falling to the Gyrocopter. A bit of miscoordination. Really nice preemptive cooldown being used by the Gyrocopter. Allowed him to pick himself up a kill. And now Gyrocopter has won the lane once again. So really nicely done by JVN or Yanni playing that Gyrocopter on the bottom lane. But yeah, Sand King doesn't really scale that well as the game goes on. His ultimate just really reduces in effectiveness once your team picks up, or once the opposing team picks up a mechanism or a pipe. And support Sand Kings won't get enough arm to pick up that dagger, or even get that many levels into Epicenter. So his ultimate will never really be a factor in this game if he doesn't manage to get some sort of levels. And right now, Sand King is just not going to have a good time getting those levels. But he is level 3 on the back of that successful first blood engagement up on the gyrocopter. He has smoke to see as well as having a boost of speed, so maybe he'll have a bit more impact than I might have stated. Double damage. The Dragonite gonna get himself a double damage but Rubik might get pincered. Mineski do have an inkling that he is there. They probably spotted him out on the back of his traps as though it's gonna be yet another pause. Looks like the connection in the Philippines is unfortunately not that stable but hopefully it will get turned around. Go is going to be the call, as right now SD is just in a very, very awkward position. Going to get the telekinesis up on the visage. TA, will she rotate? No, just not going to abandon her lane. She knows she's a bit too far, and the Grave Chill was not dropped up on the Rubik by the visage. So Rubik will be out to escape, and we're going to see engage it. Here comes Sand King. Rotation Trap will be used, but the stun is there. The double damage in conjunction with the poison, going to drain through those refractions super easily, and Sand King does pick up the last hit. So actually, this Romy Sand King having a lot bigger impact than I gave him credit for. So really nicely done by R5, R5, as they've been able to get two of the three most important heroes on the side of Mineski with these early game ganks. And again, if Mineski's life doesn't snowball, they could have a difficult time. They do have a triple core carry in terms of the late game, but still, you want to get off to a good start, because TA, her impact will not be that good against Morphing as the game goes on, and neither will be the Chaos Knight. But at the very least, Chaos Knight is having a ridiculously easy time farming up as Lakel's going to get stunned. A bit of mistimed chain stun as it was a two second stun, but the tether did overlap. I don't think they would have been able to kill the Morphing regardless, but still. Uh, don't really want to waste the men up on the Chaos Knight if you really have to. But Chaos Knight is farming ridiculously well. Like I mentioned, going to go for the fast drums. TA was receiving uninterrupted free farm in the middle lane. Picks up a bracer, so will it be a double, double drums build by Mineski, or could this just be a casual bracer? It's going to be engaged on the gyrocopter that supports it by Myth Trust once again rotating and creating another kill. And keeping it on the gyrocopter is so important because if your momentum based heroes like TA and the Chaos Knight don't get off to a good start, then gyrocopter is pretty much your best hope in the late game. So keeping him down is just going to be crucial in terms of securing yourselves every advantage possible for the late stages of the game. So brilliant roaming by the Sand King as R5 R5 is creating lob openings and is level 4 which is, you know, actually a bit higher level than you see in most support Sand King games. And that can really be attributed to Mineski just not having the correct wards in place. Their wards were mostly geared to protecting the mid lane, but once they timed out, it looks like Mineski weren't able to get the ward coverage they needed. But it doesn't really matter too much, as I think now with their first tower being claimed and Chaos Knight picking up the drums, they will be a lot more aggressive. And we'll see if they can turn this game right around. Because Myth Trust, they're doing a very, very nice job holding off the fort. But this is going to be Mineski's time to shine. Fortunately for Mineski, Wisp is not yet level 6, so it doesn't have access into the real OK ganks. Gyrocopter has been shut down in terms of farm, you can see he's playing so defensively, just because he has no wards protecting him, and he has no idea where the supports are. Rubik and Sand King are actually guarding the mid lane, but Gyrocopter has no idea. He's just forced to play super defensively, because he knows if he dies again, that's just going to keep him back a ridiculous amount, and he's going to pick up Bracer himself, so... I guess he just wants a lot of HP. I can't imagine Mineski are going to go for triple drums. But Visage was able to pick up the last hit, so I imagine that's going to help them go towards the mechanism. Although he could go for Medallion, let the Wisps get yeah. the mechanism so they can get the extra bit of healing on the back of that tether. But Aba is a level 8, so that's pretty strong leveling by the Dragonite. Only around 9.5 minutes in the game, and at this pace, the Dragonite going to hit a very, very fast level 16. And Lakels, even though his farm was shut down significantly, 
Morphling can always find his farm no matter what the situation. He's an immensely powerful split pusher, and the fact that he's so difficult to kill means that. I mean, he will be able to escape from most situations, unlike other carries. This mid lane engagement is going to happen. A one second Chaos Knight stun going to be very, very unfortunate, but Abba might end up dying nonetheless. He will die. One last right click by the Templar Assassin will seal the deal. And Maneski going to immediately rotate in for the middle tower, but unfortunately, Chaos Knight is not that healthy in terms of HP, and the trap is going to spat out the movement by Mithra. So Maneski, appropriately enough, going to back off. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. But that was an extremely necessary gank because a level 16 Dragonite early on in the game is something Mineski is definitely not ready to face. So keeping down the Dragonite's experience growth at this stage in the game is of the utmost importance. And I think that's the primary factor that Mineski should focus on in this stage of the game. Because Morphling, you know he's going to have to build the Lincolns if he wants to have as much survivability as possible. Morph Dyer's just cause, costs so much mana that you can't really afford to go anything besides the Lincoln Sphere. So, next you have time before the Morph becomes a huge issue. But the main issue is going to be the Dragon Knight and the Darkseer. And they're going to have to focus a lot of their efforts in terms of bringing him down. They do have a gank lineup. They're going to have to make the most out of it. And right now, they have a tower advantage, picked off that top tier 1 tower, and have been able to get free farm up on the TA, so they're definitely not doing a bad job. The question is, are they doing enough? And to that, I'm not too sure, but Myth Trust rotation on the sports have just been really, really clean. They're constantly protecting their important heroes on the map, and it's very difficult for Mineski to actually gank. And here's the problem with Mineski sometimes, they just seem like they don't have any idea what they want to do. Right now, they're just farming it up. I don't think Chaos Man was really farming that efficiently, but it looks like he's redeemed himself, so I might have been a bit too harsh. As he has finished the drums, he's probably going to go for the arm with BKB, BKB build, although if he does want to rush a BKB, he can't really blame him, as there's a lot of magical damage on side Myth Trust's Chaos Knight. Could be a lot of trouble. Wisp is there as well. No, that is actually the Visage, but the Burst Strike is going to be used. Waveform doing an immense chunk of damage. Jay just way too tanky. We're going to see rotation by the way. Vacuum is there. Is there a wall to back it up? No TNK does not yet have the wall. Is Morphin going to take a lot of damage? Here comes the Wisp as well, but Dragonite was able to kill off the Chaos Knight in the background. You know, TA going to clean up the Sand King. TA going to look to finish down the Rubik Call Down. It's going to be used as all of Maneski is here in this team. But Abba, so ridiculously tanky, going to be able to take so much of the damage, but the Reality Rift and the Chaos Knight, Chaos Bowl, going to be there as Chaos Knight is going to buy back. Darkseer will be able to pick up the Visage on the Retreat, but Chaos Knight will have that stop. Relatively soon, Rocket Brush doing an immense chunk of DPS, and Manessi going to come out ahead in that team fight in terms of the kill lead. But in terms of the Grand Skewer things, I don't think Mistrust are too disappointed because they did force a buyback by Mineski. Actually, yeah, just one buyback and it was on the Chaos Knight. And they forced multiple TPs, but still a really, really crucial engage from engagement from Mineski. And Chaos Knight was able to get a lot of experience that he lost being dead for that brief moment before he bought back. As Chaos Knight can initiate with the double danger, and here comes R5. R5 gonna counter that with his own initiation. Rubik gonna take a huge chunk of damage. Abba is there with the Dragon Tail. Jay taking a lot of damage, but Jay is just way too tanky. Mineski looks like they don't yet have detection. Lakel's gonna be there with the waveform. If Chaos Knight dies, he's gonna lose a huge chunk of his momentum as he's already died, bought back once. But the Iron Shell is there. Vacuum gonna finish up the kill on the Chaos Knight. And now the call is gonna be his call down and Gyrocopter doing an immense amount of damage. But Morphing just way too difficult to kill. As Mineski once again coming out ahead in that engagement, two to one, I do believe. No. Yeah, two to one. And they're going to be able to claim a middle tier one tower, but if they didn't get this tower, I think that would have actually went against Mineski because the Chaos Knight is dying way too much. As the birds looking for the tower nine gyrocopter will be more happy to clean up, and actually the birds are on the side of the rain, so the birds were just driving away the opposing squad of the Dire. But still, Myth Trust, they're in okay shape. Their Darkseer is getting a lot of levels. He's going to have that mechanism up relatively soon. And more importantly, he's going to have that wall up. And engaging into a wall with all these very, very close range heroes on Simoneski is just going to be an absolute nightmare. So I feel like TNK is going to be the linchpin of Myth Trust trying to get themselves back in. And right now, keep in mind, I'm not saying Mineski aren't up. Mineski are definitely up, but Myth Trust are not in a terrible position. And they're going to have the mech up on Darkseer really, really soon. Actually, just picked it up. So, really, really decent position Myth Trust is in. They're definitely not ahead. They're still behind. But they have the tools to get themselves back in the game very, very quickly. 
What is a bit worrying is Morphling is a very, very farm-dependent hero, and again, he does want to go for the Lincoln Sphere in order to get the maximum capability of his morph skill, and he's just going to need to farm for absolute ages, so Mythtrust is going to have to take these engagements 4v5 for a time, since Waveform, or since Morphling, rather, has been forced to either retreat very early on in the engagement, or just gets focused down. So either Morphling's got to play a bit more carefully, or he's just gonna have to farm and let his team take care of it. But here comes the engage on the Templar Assassin. Burrow Strike has already been expended. TNK is there. The con's gonna be used. A three second stun will probably mean the demise of TNK, even though he did pop the mechanism. So Mineski seemingly rolling, and Lakel is actually gonna teleport himself in. I'm not too sure what Lakel is hoping to accomplish. I'd rather he stay up top and farm. But this tower on the bottom lane is gonna get pressured. Mineski. Looking to claim another tier 2 tower, or their first tier 2 tower of the game. No Glyph is up on the side of Myth Trust, and the Darkseer is dead, so this tower will be claimed without too much of an effort. So Lakel is probably definitely regretting his choice to teleport to the bottom lane, but unfortunately, nothing in that. Can't really do anything about that now. And now Maneski really making the most out of the mid, mid game lineup, which is something, again, that they desperately need to do. And I like this choice by the Chaos Knight a lot. A lot of Chaos Knights would potentially go for the Armlet to get a little bit more DPS. That's more of a carry Chaos Knight build. This Chaos Knight is just designed to tank. Tank as much as possible and then go to work while he's still at his most powerful. And again, there's so much damage on the side of Myth Trust in the form of magical damage that Chaos Knight desperately needs to BKB. So rushing the BKB, even though he's going to lack in terms of the Armlet DPS, he's going to have that BKB allowing him to stay in the fight and just dish out so much damage. You know, the Templar Assassin has finished, the Yasha has a drums herself. I want to see if Gyrocopter... No, it's just going to be a bracer, as Gyrocopter looking to finish his own BKB relatively soon. And Gyrocopter is actually in farming reasonably well, has the highest CS in the game, and has the Shadow Blade finish, so... If worse comes worse, Gyrocopter could potentially split push, we're going to see a real okay gank up onto Lakel's. Lakel's going to take a lot of damage, but he's morphing all the while. Here comes the counter engagement by Myth Trust the Epicenter, going to be used to completely decimate the side of Mineski as Mineski engaged in the worst possible situation, and they paid for it. They lost three heroes, weren't even able to claim a single hero on the side of Myth Trust, and Lakel's got a huge amount of experience as well as gold from that kill. So Mineski throwing away a huge lead on the back of that. They might be able to get a tier 2 in exchange, but they're going to definitely lose this tier 1, and actually we are going to see a teleport by the Dragonite protecting this tier 2. As the birds are going to be there, the Meld actually doing a lot of damage, but I think Abba will be okay. He's definitely going to be okay with the teleport of the Darkseer. So Mineski, they, their lineup is designed to play aggressive, but their over-eagerness to get the kill on Morphling definitely came back to butt him in the ass, as they had no vision, they had no idea that the entire Myth Trust squad were there. And Myth Trust just played that beautifully. Really strong epicenter by R5, R5 who's playing ridiculously well. I've already finished the Arcane Boots, which is very uncommon for a, ca a Sand King at this point in the game. I'm just so used to support Sand Kings really just failing, but R5, R5 really doing a nice job and showing that Sand King can be a very viable support. Golgraph and Eski definitely have the advantage. Not only are they leading in terms of farm, they also have four more towers than Myth Trust. Well, three more towers at this stage in the game. Experience Graph, still in favor of Mineski on the back of their superior farm. You can see they have three of the top four farmers. But Myth Trust, again, they're strong in team fights. Darkseer is going to be the king of team fights in this game. Morphling, ridiculously difficult to bring down team fights on the back of his immense survivability. Dragonite, also pretty difficult to bring down as JVN could be in a lot of trouble. Going to get spy out, doesn't have anything like a blink as the ward is going to drop. JVN's going to get lifted up in the air. Iron Shell, going to drain down all the fraction charges. Sanking, going to clean up the kill as Sand King just wants to get as much gold as possible. So, really strong gank by the Myth Trust squad. They were smoked up, so that war by Maneski was not able to catch out Myth Trust movement. And now Myth Trust, every kill they get, means that Maneski can't go on the offensive, because TA is definitely a crucial component in Maneski's aggressive lineup. But still, I mean, Maneski definitely make the most out of this time. If they can finish a BKB up on the Chaos Knight relatively soon and get that at a similar timing that the Gyrocopter gets his own BKB, then I think Maneski could potentially muscle down the Tier 2 and then rotate to Rush without too much of a problem. 
but still Mythrust have been doing some very nice rotations, getting kills when they need it, delaying the item choices by Mineski by quite a big deal, and TA is starting to lose some of her effectiveness, did not snowball nearly as hard as some of the other heroes on side Mineski, and even though she does have a lot of farm, she's nowhere close to picking up the DKB, as she is going to try to get that, but it's going to be a long ways away. Meal Visage picked up a point booster. Gonna go eventually into the Agon Scepter. Uh, this is a good item for Visage when he's ahead, not so much when he's behind because then the birds essentially become fodder. Especially against a Gyrocopter with a flat cannon because the birds get absolutely demolished. And Dragonite, if you do clump up the birds, then the Ice Breath will do quite a bit. But even in this game, it's gonna be difficult for Mythrust just to kill down all the birds, so I do like the Agon Scepter choice. And it is gonna be whisking the mechanism because, of course, he does give that increased healing if you are tethered to an ally. But still, the fact that Wisp has not been able to execute too many ganks means that this mechanism is going to be severely delayed. And it's not like Mezki can pick up easy access gold for the Wisp. They've already claimed a lot of the towers. So Wisp is going to be very, very behind picking up this mechanism. But Gyrocopter has finished his BKB. Really nicely done. The Chaos Knight probably very close to finishing his own BKB. Actually, he's getting sh it shipped towards him right at this moment. And me, LTA, farming faster than I gave her credit for. She's going to have her BKB up relatively soon, and once Myth Trust fight up against three BKBs on the side of Mineski, how much can they actually do? Because at this point, they do very negligible physical damage. Dragonite is building to be very, very tanky, but 115 damage is definitely nothing to be threatened by at this stage of the game. Mikel is actually going straight up for the Ghost Scepter. So it's going to rely on his waveform to escape rather than his morph, rather than going for the Lincoln Sphere. Interesting choice. I still think morphing does need the Lincoln Sphere in order to get that split push going, but Mikel's, since he's not split pushing, doesn't really need the extra bit of mana for waveform in order to kill the creeps ASAP. And instead, it seems to be going for more of a team fight morph and focusing a bit more in survivability. And Mineski do have a lot of physical damage, so avoiding that physical DPS in team fights is going to be of the utmost importance. Meanwhile, you know, Mineski were able to claim the tier 2 mid without too much of a hitch. Again, Myth Trust probably noticed the BKBs up on the gyro, as well as CK, and knew they couldn't fight it. So nice engagement by Mineski, claiming the tower without too much bloodshed, as well as protecting their tier 1 on the top lane. So Mineski still are in a very, very good position. But the question remains, how are they going to break the base against a Darkseer? And to that, I'm not honestly too sure. Because keep in mind, if you have a BKB, wall still will hurt you and still will create the, create the illusions. So it's not going to be guaranteed as a Ba going to get surged away. Chaos Knight is there. Looks like they're going to go for the Dragonite. The BKB will be used by the Chaos Knight as well as the Gyrocopter as Surge. Going to help protect the Dragonite as long as possible. He's going to get sucked back in as they're going to kill off the Dragonite at the cost of two BKB usages and a Phantasm. So Mineski is going to have to make a lot from this cast announcement. They're going to go in for Roche, which I think is going to be the correct response, but Gyrocopter is actually going to go defend the top lane in the meanwhile. So the reason why Phantasm being used is such a crucial, crucial point, I suppose, is that Phantasm is one of the ways Mineski can break the base, and without it, they can't really push the high ground. But, with the TA in the pit and the melt damage, they're able to kill off Roshan very quickly, and Chaos Knight is stuck on the cliff because of the vacuum. TA gonna get the last hit as well as the Aegis, so gonna give her a lot of survivability, but Chaos Knight... Oh man, the birds are just being fodder for the Morphling at this point, as Wisp gonna teleport the Chaos Knight out to safety. They didn't want to use the TP because it might have gotten cancelled, so they're just gonna use a relocate, and the Wisp will be able to escape very, very easily because his team is in a prime position to make that happen, and actually Wisp going to teleport back in with the Chaos Knight. But I think it would be smart for Mineski to actually farm up the Wisp for a bit. I think they really want the mechanism, and I think they really do need the mechanism, especially against the Darkseer. And if Sand King manages to get an Epicenter in conjunction with the wall, once the BKVs are down, then Mineski are just going to get absolutely melted. But still, Mineski are in a solid shape. You can see they have the top three net worth heroes on or in the game. Gold graph is heavily in their favor. Experience graph is heavily in their favor as well. Even though the score is 12 to 12, Mineski are just able to split up a lot more easily, and Myth Trust are just sort of forced to hold hands constantly, and that is severely limiting their experience growth. Dragonite going to go for the BKB, but still, how much is that going to help you up against a Gyrocopter, a TA, and a Chaos Knight? 
I mean, it'll help you against Chaos Knight and the Visage, but not so much against the other two heroes. But still, he wants to tank up, and BKB is definitely going to be the way to go. Meanwhile, TA has just finished her BKB, so it looks like Mineski trying to gear up for a push. They don't have the mechanism up on the Wisp, but it looks like he's been able to find some semblance of farm, and he will be able to pick up the mechanism relatively soon. And looks like he is going to take some of the last hits, or going to try to at the very least. Yeah, really nicely done by Mineski. They know Mineski's Wisp getting the mechanism is going to be really, really important, so they're going to allow him to get him without too much of a hassle. And with this, Mineski potentially have the abilities to break the base. But still, it's going to be insanely difficult up against the Darkseer. And this is when Lakel's Ghost Scepter build might come back to bite him in the ass a little bit. If he was able to split push freely, then... I mean, it would be so difficult for Mineski to actually push in because all their lanes would be constantly pressured. But since he went for the go uh, this Ghost Scepter build, he's not really going to have enough man to spam that waveform and push out the lanes all the time. And as such, he's just sort of forced to confine himself in a very, very limited area of the map. But Mythtrust, recognizing that their top tier 2 can probably not be defended, they're going to go for the middle tier 1 in exchange. Dragonite going to pop his dragon for him. Dragonite reaching that very, very crucial level of 16 relatively soon. So, if that is up by the time Mineski go for the base, then that is just going to be ridiculously difficult for Mineski to break through. And you can see, the rate that Mythtrust is pushing is actually faster than the rate that Mineski can potentially push. And Mythtrust is going to force the Gyrocopter to teleport back, and he has no way to get back to his team very easily unless he just walks towards him. And Gyrocopter picked up a Talisman Invasion straight up. So, I'm not too sure how I feel about this. Maybe he knows the wall is going to be a huge problem, and the wall physical damage is quite a big issue if those illusions do hit. The Dragonite does hurt a bit, but Morphing's right click damage is not really that fearsome. Dragonite's right click damage is not really that fearsome. So, I don't think rushing a straight up Talisman Invasion is the best option. I'd rather he just saved up his money, and if he had that extra bit of money, he could have picked up the Eagle Song, or maybe even a Demon Edge. But I'm not too sure how much the Talisman Invasion will do. And keep in mind, the Illusions do get the Invasion, so if Darkseer can get a successful wall off, then those Illusions will be relatively tanky on the back of their Invasion, as Darkseer actually has a Pipe of Insight to protect against a magical DPS on the Simoneski, which is very minimal, but every bit does help. But Mineski going to work have not been forced to use their BKBs just yet, use the TA double damage rune, and were able to get a significant chunk of damage up on that tier 3 tower. The Aegis still has two or two and a half minutes left, and the Chaos Knight actually can use the Phantasm, but Sand King picked up the dagger, was able to get a huge impale. Here comes the Flame Breath as the wall was perfectly positioned, but still Mineski seemingly does not care. TNK gonna be a lot of trouble, the pipe as well as the mechanism are gonna be used as JVN gonna be pushed away, he still has the Aegis left, and actually Mythtrust gonna only lose their tier 3 in exchange, and if they can only lose their tier 3, they must count themselves very lucky, they're gonna actually go back in as Morphling Fish, the Ethereal Blade, what lucky timing, or what great calculated timing by Mythtrust, Sankic Channel the Epicenter was able to get the kill on the TA, and it looks like TA will die a second time as Sankic gonna pause at the worst opportune moment, Oa oh, doing a lot of DPS in the backline. A bot probably gonna die, but still, really, really beautiful engagement by Mythtrust thus far. I did not expect Lakels to pick up that E Blade, but he was able to secure himself that. Sanking with the dagger was able to get an epicenter. It wasn't able to do that much, but was pretty good in terms of bringing down the TA's Aegis. And the reason why I said if Mythtrust can only lose their tier 3 and count themselves lucky is because they're facing against freaking 5 Chaos Knight Illusions. The Illusion Rune and the Phantasm. And those are a lot of Illusions banging away at that tier 3 tower, but their racks are still at full HP. So if they only lose a Dragonite in this exchange, they are definitely going to be a prime position to come back in this game. Especially now that Morphing is doing a respectable amount of damage. I'm just going to fast forward a bit, as Gold experience definitely in favor of Mineski, but once his TA dies, and the Visage is probably going to die shortly after, then I've got to imagine the graphs are definitely going to take a swing in Mythtrust's favor by just a bit. 
I mean, still will be in Mineski's advantage, but Mythrust will be able to recover as, ooh, a huge amount of fast forwarding, as I have to apologize, I was not expecting that, but I'm gonna be able to get that right back in there, because this is a replay cast. And Visage actually was not able to kill the Dragon Knight. Morphin was able to kill the Visage on the back of his huge amount of burst damage. And Wisp actually going to relocate the Templar Assassin in safety. That means Wisp is going to throw away his own life. But no, Mineski going to try to bail their Wisp friend out of trouble. And they will be successful in doing so. They're going to actually try to kill the Morphin Replicate. And they will be successful in doing that as well. But still, Mythtrust escaped that with zero casualties. Mineski is going to push in. I don't think they can actually break the base. They don't have Phantasm up, but they're going to do their darndest. They know Wall is not yet up, so that's what they're waiting for. But a huge bro strike, a four-man bro strike by the Sanking. R5, R5, playing an, an absolute champ. J, J trying to do as much work as possible, but just getting kited around. His BKB is rapidly running out, and now Mythtrust can go back on the offensive. Sanking once again with a clutch bro strike. Tia gonna get herself right back in the fray. Jay is gonna die. Sanking gonna die as well, but Fent or Templar Assassin will end up forfeiting her life. You can't run, you can't hide forever from a surge Dragonite, but actually, I guess you can if you have the dagger up. But still, R5, R5 playing the game of his life. Not only did he have beautiful roams early on, clutch bro strikes a huge epicenter. And he is keeping Mythtrust in the game. You know, the top tower was cleaned up by the creeps on the side of Mythtrust. And Lakels has not died, picked up so much experience in that team fight, as well as a lot of Siskold. And that is going to definitely help to fuel his next time. And now Morphling is starting to become a huge factor, especially since Gyrocopter has not been able to get as much farm Radiant's recently. He's been constantly dying. And he's definitely paying the price. As, did he die, buy back, and die again? He's just been dead the whole time. I'm not too sure. I guess I can check very, very soon. Yeah, he did actually die, buy back, and die a second time. So Gyrocopter is just going to have his farm severely hampered on the back of those deaths. You know, bah, closing in on that magical level 16. Sanking has been able to hit that level 11, so Epicenter does hurt, especially with no pipe up on the side of Mineski. I mean, they still have tank heroes, they still have three BKBs, but the slow is still pretty significant because it's going to be even more difficult to escape the DK Frost Breath because the Epicenter slow does go through the BKB. And Mineski once again charging in. I think they should just take a moment and breathe and find a game plan. They have the Phantasm back up, but the Chaos Knight is now behind in terms of levels, and if you look at the experience graph, it's only ever so slightly in Mineski's favor. Gold graph still heavily in Mineski's favor, but that's just on the back of so many towers being cleaned up by Mineski. And these towers are just gold waiting to be claimed by Mythtrust. You all just checking out the items, Rubik. Looks like he's just been warning up. Does he have any items on the courier? He does not. As Mythrust going to smoke up and try to look for an engagement. You know, TA with the dagger has the Yasha, so we'll probably go into the Manta style. Manta style going to be very instrumental in terms of allowing Mineski actually a risk free, risk free way to actually damage the barracks. So Manta style is definitely going to be the preferred option for this Templar Assassin. Lakel's picked up the Lingot Sphere, or picked up the Ultimate Orb. Could go into the Lingot Sphere, could also go into a Manta style. At this point, it seems like he has no intention of split pushing, so he doesn't actually need the mana regen to help fuel his waveform spam. So, I guess he probably won't go Lingot Sphere. We'll probably go for the Manta style, or even Scotty, but I gotta think Manta style would be a better option. And a ba one creep away from hitting that level 16. What are you doing? Just get that level 16. Oh, man. Seems like he's intent on not picking up, but he had no vision of where Mineski was, so for all he knew, that could have been a trap, and he definitely did not want to use the buyback. Meanwhile, you know, Jay tried to farm up. Looks like he's going to go for the very late armlet. Could be a satanic, but I've got to think Armlet is going to be a better option. Will allow Chaos Knight to do more damage, as well as give his illusions more tank ability, and give himself more HP as well. And Rubik actually picked up a Ghost Scepter, so good item selection by a side of Myth Trust. The only questionable item is the Pipe by the Darkseer, because there's really not too much damage that Mineski's pumping out in terms of magical damage, but still, I mean, every bit does help. 
and the pipe might have actually saved Darkseer because it actually was very low in the last engagement. And he's going to go for Plate Mail to Shiva's Guard, and against this physical DPS lineup that Mineski is running, Shiva's Guard reduced attack speed and will just be very, very crucial in terms of reducing the DPS. And every bit does count, and of course, the armor bonus that grants Darkseer will be very significant as well. The you Almaneski, know, I think they realize they don't really want to fight without the Aegis. They're going to wait for Roshan to respawn, and Roshan actually is going to respawn. And checking out the vision, it looks like the Dire are a bit restricted in terms of vision. They're still playing very, very defensively. And Milan Mineski have a lot more aggressive wards, but they can't really do too much with these aggressive wards. But still, the fact that they've claimed all the tier 2s on the side of Mythtrust means that Mineski should have the Roshan advantage. But if Mythtrust are able to steal it, that will definitely give them advantage in this game, no matter how far behind they are in terms of the gold graph. And DK, I gotta think his next time is gonna be an AC. And he's getting dangerously close to Hyperstone. We'll have it in about 100 gold. As actually, Mythtrust gonna smoke up Mineski. I have no idea that this is gonna be the case. But so far, Mineski not really in a position to be caught out. Visage actually picked up a gem trying to get the D wards going. Might end up dying in exchange as he is in a very, very exposed position. And meanwhile, Morphling farming the top lane but keeping a relocate illusion with his team so he can get into the fray ASAP. And they're gonna find the TA. This is the worst possible target that Mineski wanted to be caught out. Dragonite just gonna immediately burst down the Templar Assassin with the help of the Morphling. And with that, that is gonna be an easy rush. TA does have buyback, but it's just gonna be very difficult to contest this Roshan. But they know they don't have any choice. If they give up the Aegis of the Morphling, then he's just going to be essentially immortal. Or even the Dragonite is ridiculously difficult to bring down at this point in the game. So Maneski going to buy back. They should try to claim Roshan, but still. They are facing up against a Darkseer and a Sanking. Heroes that thrive when their opponents are confined to a very enclosed position. And even Dragonite, even though he did pop the ultimate form. Once he gets that back up, the Frost Breath will just slow everybody in the Roshan pit by such an immense amount that Mineski are just going to be very, very hard pressed to win an engagement. But still, Dark Seer is the main issue if Mineski do go for the Roshan. Dragonite, his ultimate did time out, but now he's level 16, so the next time he uses it, he will have that Frosty Dragon Breath. And Mineski just poking and prodding. They want to make TA have, TA's buyback have some meaning, but. Looks like all it will be able to accomplish is them not losing Roshan, as it seems like they're not in good, pos good position to take Roshan themselves. And I have to agree, the BKB timing on the Chaos Knight especially is actually, well, it's still 8 seconds. So he does still have a decent length, so Epicenter still won't do as much, but again, against a Darkseer in the pit, that is the worst possible position you want to be confined in if you are the team facing the Darkseer. You know, Jay actually focusing on the Sand King. Sand King immediately pops the Sandstorm, but they're going to fo force the BKB by the Dragonite, so a small victory by Mineski. I'm not too sure why they decided to use the Reality Rift on the DK. He didn't have the BKB activated at that moment. Mineski, knowing that the DK uses BKB, immediately going to go on the offensive. They do have more illusions of the Chaos Knight, as he did not use the Phantasm, just another illusion. They should probably wait for level 16 up on the Chaos Knight before they try to push in. That extra illusion definitely will help matters quite a bit. But knowing that the BKB is down, they're going to try to kill the Roshan. They have the Medallion up on the Visage as well as the Meldash. And this Roshan, here comes the rotation by Mythtrust. TNK approach, approaching the Roshan pit very, very rapidly. The bird's going to slow in the assault by, Mines, or by Mythtrust as the wall is used in a very, very dangerous choke point. Mineski forced to run through, but Lakel's taking so much damage, he is going to die very, very quickly. And Miel JVN will be on the pursuit. BKB not yet up for the Dragonite as he has used his Dragon Form yet again. He actually has not leveled up his level 3 Dragon Form. Not too sure why he wanted the extra point of stats, but he's going to pay for it with his life. I mean, the level 3 Dragon Form wouldn't have helped him, but still, he is going to be dead. He's going to force to buy back. And Mineski just winning this team fight on the back of the pure chaos that is occurring. And Mineski won that team fight convincingly. What's going to relocate get his ally back to safely, safety, but Wisp going to be in a bit of an exposed position, but should be able to escape without too much of an issue. So what went wrong for Mythtrust and Nine Engagement? Well, they came to the Roshan a bit too late, 
and they couldn't get off the epicenter, even though they did have Wall in a decent position, isolating the three carries of Maneski, forcing them to run through the wall. They couldn't get any other sources of DPS in, and again, BKB at this point is still negating so much myth trust damage. They really don't have that much physical damage at the moment. And Morphling actually going to go for the Scotty rather than going for the Manta style. He was forced to buy back, keep in mind, just to prevent Maneski from pushing into the barracks. And Maneski, it looks like they have intentions of going t towards the high ground, trying to claim their first tracks of the game. I don't think they should without the Phantasm, but it looks like they have some semblance of confidence to make that happen. They know if they win the next engagement, they win the game, because they've already killed all the other towers, and Dragonite and Morphling, the two most important heroes on the side of Myth Trust, well, I guess excluding the Darkseer, have already used their buyback, so if they die again, then that'll definitely be two sets of racks, at the very least, for Maneski. But Maneski choosing to slow play it a bit. Morphling on in the meanwhile is going to split push. He is going to have that Scotty up in about 300 gold. So Maneski, not knowing this, might look to make their move relatively soon. You know, Yanni with the Aegis has that butterfly finish. Templar Assassin it is going to go for the Desolate rather than going for the Manta style. So a little bit more base sieging of an item. Getting that bit of extra minus armor onto the buildings. As well as getting the minus armor onto the Dragonite and even the Morphling who gets a lot of armor because a lot of his attributes are switched to agility. He does have quite a bit of armor to go through. Mechanism finished by the Wisp, also a Ghost Scepter as Maneski looking to breach the high ground. Phantasm will be up so this is a good time for Maneski to actually push in. Definitely agree with this timing as Surge will be used by the Darkster trying to get in position for a vacuum while his Chaos Knight going to poke his head out a little bit but still Mythtrust seeming to not bite at this opportunity just yet. Dragonite still does not have his level 3 ultimate form. I gotta think this is a bit of a panic misclick by Aba. Uh, Maneski just gonna force out the Dragonite form once again. And I gotta imagine that Maneski are just gonna wait for this Dragonite form to wear out and then they'll go back in. But still, they might choose to not do that because that form does last for a minute and the Aegis only has so Radiant much left on it. It only has three minutes left, so... Maneski perhaps sensing that. Gonna actually have to perhaps take engagement. Replicate by the Morphing will be used as it is gonna be used to d -war. Dragonite actually had the gem. So, nice usage of the Replicate as Dragonite is, in fact, gonna go for that Assault Curus. And Maneski seemingly, like, seemingly knows that Dragonite's form will wear out relatively soon, and it is going to wear out. So good timing by Maneski. We'll see if they can break the base. They are still facing a Darkseer with the help of the Sand King, but they have a lot of illusions in their back pocket. Chaos Knight going to initiate, going to find a Ba as the Vacuum Wall will be there to drive Maneski back for the time being. Jay seemingly does not care, going to go on the offensive with his Phantasm, is going to back off as the Glyph is going to be used. Oh, um, Maneski looks like they just want to force out the Glyph, but that means Phantasm will be down. The next time Phantasm is up, that means the Aegis will be down, because Phantasm does have a long cooldown, but Jay, nice micro, going to save his illusions for the time being. He knows that his illusions life are precious, but it looks like they're not accomplishing too much. They did force out the Glyph. Meanwhile, Morphing was able to claim up the bottom tier 2 tower in exchange. Maneski didn't have to make their move, otherwise Morphing will be knocking at the front door. Oa going to charge in very, very confidently. The wall is still up. It lasts such a long time at level 3, 45 seconds. Pretty ridiculous duration as Morphling is pushing on the bottom lane. Glyph has been used as Jay. Y and gonna blink in. The wall has just timed out, so this is a very, very bad time for Myth Trust. But the episode slowly down Maneski by quite a bit. Call down, not hitting too much of anything. Gyrocopter using the BKB. Morphling is back in the fray as Maneski gonna claim the first set of barracks in the game without getting any kills. Non violence is the answer, apparently. And Maneski gotta be very, very pleased with how that went. They did not lose anybody. And all they lost is a tier 2 bot, but still, they should probably go back to bottom lane, defend their tier 3. But right now, Maneski are in a prime position to take this game. Radiant's bottom tower is but still, attack. can't really play passively up against Morphling, because he only has two of his endgame items. The rest of his items still can be filled out. And he's going to get only more and more powerful. As actually, the Radiant not going to bother defending their bottom lane, just going to allow the creeps in the tower to do its natural defense rather than going to defend it themselves. It looks like they just want to 
go with what is close to them is the Aegis timing out relatively soon. Yes, that is the case, as Aegis is timing out, so Mineski want to use the Aegis rather than going to defend their bags. So we'll see if that comes back to haunt them, as again, Phantasm is not yet up. My eye is going to be on the Jackrop as Aegis is timed out, and we'll see if that gives Mineski pause. I think Phantasm is such a crucial component in this base push that I'm not too sure Mineski should push in because now they're facing a tier 3 and Wall is back up again. And keep in mind, even though they took the barracks, they weren't able to kill anybody. Even if Mithrust themselves weren't able to kill anybody. And now Morphling has his Scotty. Surge forward. Ion Shell will be there up on the Dragonite. And Mineski just trying to siege with the Desolator. Looks like they are going to play a bit passively as actually the birds are wrapping around. Will there be a relocate gank by the Wisp trying to cut, catch out the Sand King or perhaps the Darkseer? No, just a bit too dangerous as even though birds are giving them some vision, it's not going to be enough as Phantasm is going to be used by Jay. Going to look to get out the replicate of the Darkseer. Oh no, Mineski Chow is the wrong target to initiate. They're going to turn their attention onto the real Darkseer. Jarkov doing immense amounts of DPS as the Sand King was not able to get too much damage on his epicenter whatsoever, but now Morphling going to work. They're going to kill off Jay. The Kalos has just become a huge problem as Chaos Knight forced to buy back, as was the Gyrocopter. I'm not sure if that was necessary, as the creeps are definitely in favor of Mineski. I don't think the buybacks are all too necessary in that case, but maybe they were fearing the Morphling boots are traveling in and pushing down the bottom barracks. And Mineski actually getting to go right back. I don't know why they're playing so aggressively at this point. They might be throwing away a lot of their advantage. I mean, they are they won't be fighting against the wall or the epicenter anymore, but wall will be back up in 50 seconds. So that's definitely not too long of a time. So maybe that's why Mineski are playing so aggressive at this moment. TA, however, gonna get quadruple stunned once again by the Sand King. E-Blade going to work. Will kill off Jay very, very quickly. Templar Assassin was able to kill off the Sand King, but Lakel's gonna take a lot of damage. Does he have buyback? If Lakel's does not have buyback, that could be end of Myth Trust. No, he does have buyback. So Myth Trust still have another shot. I think they're waiting for the Darkseer to come back with the Wall of Replica as Morphing is going to buy back, knowing that the Wisp as well as Chaos Knight are not there. Visage going to take a lot of damage. The Vacuum up onto the cliff will be there as Morphing secures the kill on Visage. Here comes Wisp as well as Chaos Knight back in the fray, but his team is not there to back him up. The will get stunned. No BKB or Lincolns means that he will be constantly disabled as TNK back in the midst of everything, running in, doing a lot of damage with this Iron Shell. The Wall will be up in four seconds. And Maneski, I don't think they can push in against the Wall. They've already used so many of their buybacks as the Wall is used in conjunction with the Vacuum. Here comes the Dragonite once again. Not even Elder Dragon form, but still, he's pumping out the DPS. And it looks like Chaos Knight, as well as Gyrocopter, gonna die. Lakel's gonna be on the pursuit, looking to kill off the Wisp, who pops his Ghost Scepter. But still, there's only so much he can do as a Wisp player at this moment. Can't even relocate out of there. And Myth Trust capitalizing on the overaggressive nature of Mineski. Might have just won themselves a game, because there is no buyback on the Gyrocopter or on the Chaos Knight. Well, Mythtrust can't win the game off of this, but they can definitely take a tier 2 at the very least and get themselves some Roshan Control. And actually, they will be able to claim the Aegis on the back of this Roshan Control. Oh my god, Mineski, they might have just made a huge blunder. Golgraph still heavily in their favor. Experience Graph, not so much, but the buyback decision making might just cost them this game in the end. But it looks like the heroes will naturally respawn before the Roshan actually does come back. So Mineski still in a decent position. The only problem is that their main hero is losing so much net worth on the back of these buybacks. And now you can see three out of the top five net worth heroes are actually inside a myth trust, even though they have three fewer towers or four fewer towers than Mineski. So this is very, very dangerous for Myth Trust or for Mineski. The only positive is that Morphing does not have buyback, so if they can kill off the Morphing, they should be able to win the game right off of that. But now Dragonite does actually have his third point into Elder Dragon form. He had it in the last engagement, and that was able to just slow down the pursuit of Mineski by quite a big amount. Morphing picked up the Yasha, gonna go straight for the Manta. Knowing that he doesn't have buyback, just gonna choose to buy out. Smart move. And look at his damage, he is hitting for 265 damage per hit at a very, very fast attack rate with a lot of armor to boot and a respectable amount of HP. This Morphling is going to be ridiculously difficult to bring down as Chaos Knight going to go for the Heaven's Halberd most likely, knowing that Morphling does not have a BKB, nor does he have a Lincoln Sphere. But DK does have the AC up, 
Morphling, no BKB just yet. Doesn't have too much gold. If he dies, that could be the game for Mythrust, but likewise, if Maneski dies, they definitely won't have enough money to buy back, even if they do have the buyback cooldown reset. And their item progression has definitely ground to a halt because of all those sort of unnecessary buybacks. And I say unnecessary because I don't think they need to push in the top lane. And once I saw the Gyrocopter Aegis timeout, I think they should have backed off. But, I mean, it's tricky because Morphling is so dangerous as the game goes on. So it might have actually been the correct move for Maneski to push in. But just judging from a third person's perspective, I don't think that was the right move by Maneski. But they still can win the game. They still have a Rax advantage. But against a Morphling, one Rax does not mean too much. Levels. Visage gonna go for the hood most likely. Hood gonna be very useful. And actually I'm a bit surprised Maneski did not pick up a pipe epicenter. Even though they do have three big KBs, there's still a lot of magical damage to work through on the side. Mythra says Maneski gonna go for the Roshan. They will be able to claim it without too much of a fuss. Can they get the cheese as well? Gyrocopter picks up the Aegis and Maneski gonna retreat safely. Nicely done by Maneski. Pushed with the Wisp, caused a diversion, then immediately went in as Spectator. Very, very nicely done. Right on the Roshan timer. Meanwhile, Shiva's Guard has been finished by the Dark Sir. Sanking has actually picked up a drum, so now that DK's drum charges have already been used. And now, without the Aegis, Lakel kind of has to save for Bayek, so his item progression will be sold by a decent amount, but still. I think these items will be more than enough to clean out at least one of the carry heroes on Simoneski. But still, there are two more carries the heroes I used to go through. You know, TA gonna buy out, looking to finish, and AC will finish it, so she is doing a lot of minus, dam minus armor damage to heroes as well as buildings. So even with the ridiculously tanky Dragonite as well as Morphling, that minus armor will allow them to be hurt a little bit more. As both teams playing very, very patiently. Looks like Maneski don't really want to push in until they get one more item up but the Gyrocopter. As he has picked up the Helen Dominator, so Satanic will definitely be next in his arsenal at this rate, but still. I don't know, Tranquil Boots not really doing that much as Morphin gonna claim a tier two for free. Glyph is actually being used at the wrong time by Maneski. So a bit of a mistake. They probably should have just let that tier two fall. They wouldn't have been able to get back to defend it regardless because Jarocopter has no room for a TP, so not too sure why they used the Glyph at that point. Meanwhile, the game rolls on. Experience Graph slightly in favor of Maneski. Goal Graph still in favor of Maneski, as the farm is still heavily in their court, but the item progression still. I got a favor of Myth Trust. And Lakel's. Now he doesn't even need the Lincoln Sphere. His natural intelligence growth means that he can just spam that waveform. And of course, the stats by Scotty definitely don't hurt. Haste. And we have to see at what point Maneski decides to go for it. They might play passively again if it comes down to a late game fight. I think Maneski can be in a decent shape, but. It's not guaranteed up against the Morphling. Morphling is just such a tricky late game hero to play against because he's so damn survival and does so much damage. And Maneski, they only have so much time left on the Aegis. It looks like they only have around three and a half minutes left before the Aegis does time out. And actually Maneski looking to split push on the bomb lane. No, they're all grouping up to go for the bottom lane as the Visage is not in position, his birds are not in position either. Faces. As he might just resummon them or just look to fly them in. But Maneski looking to make the most out of this Aegis, then they pick up a huge timing item that they can make usage of this push. No, it doesn't look like it as Cast Knight gonna approach from the middle lane. I mean, the AC could be all that Maneski was waiting for. As here comes another huge blink. Burrow strike by the Sanking Vacuum. Walk into a huge chunk as Wisp gonna relocate somebody right out of the battle. He relocated himself out of the battle. And Maneski seemingly getting cleaned up. But Kel's still at full HP as well as full mana. And the Aegis has been used on the Gyrocopter. And he will die 
once again, Jay already bought back, Shadow Copter does not have enough to buy back, and now TA gonna get the heck out of there, but can she actually run? No, the relocate in conjunction with Scotty will be enough. TA looking to teleport on there, but Adaptive Strike just says, nah, -uh, girl, you cannot escape from me. Waveform gonna be used, but TA can likely blink out of this once it is back up. But Dragonite still has a gem, and TA is just gonna blink on out of there. Now she's caught in a very, very awkward position. But Maneski, just the sanking these openings that Sanking's giving them, it's such a, a crucial initiation by R5 R5 because his bro strikes means that Maneski can actually use the magical damage regardless of BKBs because they're stunned. They can't even use the BKBs. It's actually, there is going to be a backdoor attempt by the TA. She was able to clean up the melee barracks, but she will trade her life in exchange. Gutsy play by G, uh, JVN as he is going to back, but meanwhile Morphling does not care seemingly. Ghost Scepter will be used by the Rubik, but now Morphling is going to turn his attention to Chaos Knight. Chaos Knight just taking way too much damage. So Kels being surrounded by everybody on side Maneski. Going to solo them up. Can he man mode everybody on Maneski? No, he's going to have to back off. He's out of mana. He will get killed off. He's going to have to buy back because now his team is three racks down. He's going to finish his med style. And Maneski is still holding on. And if they can kill the kills, they can win the game, but... Double damage. Yeah, it's still a very dice situation. If they lose any of their other carries, they might lose themselves, because they've used a lot of their buybacks already. Aside from the Jowcott, who now has that buyback back online. And Mythtrust looking to just group up and push mid for the game winning maneuver. They do have the double damage group on, rune up on the Dragonite, and nothing else. The kills finish the med style, but... If he dies, that will be the game. Darkseer, no end progression. No end progression on side Maneski either as a bug initiate onto the Templar Assassin. JVN does not buy back. They're going to immediately press on Jack after He's going to buy back. He's the only one inside of Maneski who can buy back. TA dumping out huge amounts of damage, but unfortunately can't get any kills. Lakels has the replicate to get himself out of trouble as Jay looking to initiate, trying to pick off the Rubik. Unfortunately, Rubik just going to run away with Ghost Scepter. Jay trying to do as much work as he can, but the wall just cutting off the approach of his allies means that Jay will die by himself. He cannot buy back. Fat Dog going to die as well. Morphling going to go to work. Looking to pick off the Visage, gonna instead turn his focus onto the Gyrocopter. Gyrocopter actually doing a huge amount of damage, trying to get the Morphing down to such low HP, morphing, morphing all of his strats into strength. Still has a respectful amount of damage to work with, and Maneski gonna actually defend their barracks. Holy crap, what a game! As this is approaching into an epic status. And I'm not too sure how Maneski honestly defended it. They still have a lot of damage left. Uh, but unfortunately, Chaos Knight died, Gyrocopter was forced to buy back, and Mythtrust actually did not lose anybody other than the Sand King. So, all th when everything's said and done, Mythtrust definitely came out ahead, and his Dragon Knight gonna buy a dagger. This is very, very old school, as this was purely used to initiate by old Western teams and also Filipino teams from time to time, getting that initiation with the Dragon Tail. And Dragon Tail is a very, very strong initiation spell. And this is going to be a gutsy play. They want to blink in and kill off the TA or the Gyrocopter. They know if they do that, they can win the game. So that is purely what this Dragon Knight blink dagger is for. And Maneski have no idea that Dragon Knight has picked up this dagger. They might not be expecting it. As Mythtrust looking to push in. And Morphin going to buy out, picks up an Ogre X to give himself a bit more stats to play around with, as well as a bit more HP. Looks like Mythtrust is going to work on these T3 tower as there is going to be a backdoor attempt by the Familiars. Dragonite going to venture forward, actually blinks in, going to stun off Yanni. Here comes the vacuum, sanking once again, getting it stunned. Yanni going to get absolutely obliterated. Jay manning up, but the wall is there, and Jay just simply can't do enough. Templar Assassin, where are you, my friend? Just couldn't do anything. Was very, very late on the assault. And it looks like Mythtrust will be able to claim the middle barracks. I don't know if they can end the game off of this, but Jowcopter is dead for such a long time. Mythtrust actually going to skip the middle barracks. going to switch their focus to the throne. Such a smart move because Mineski are just missing so much of their physical TPS. Blinking by the Dragonite. Looking to pick off the Visage. And it looks like Templar Assassin was able to kill off the Rook. But in exchange, Morphling kills off the Templar Assassin. And I think Mineski have just lost the game. Mythtrust winning with just superior late game decision making and on the brute strength of Lakel's trademark here with the Morphling, Mythtrust is going to win the game.
What a game. GG well played by both sides. But Mithra is going to take game one in this best of three series. Trying to move on to the losers finals of their TI3 Eastern Qualifier group. Hopefully you enjoy that game. As that was action packed as heck. A lot of interesting decision. A lot of epic team fights. I'm surprised there's only 57 kills in 57 minutes. It feels like a lot more action took place. But hopefully you enjoy that game. Thanks for watching everybody. And I will see you all next time with game two. Peace.